Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you a brief tutorial on using Zoom, which seems to be the video conferencing service of choice during quarantine. Okay, so now that I've done about 12 impromptu Zoom tutorials for family and friends, I figured it might be helpful to do a quick video on it. I'll definitely go over attending a Zoom meeting, but I'll also cover how to schedule a meeting, how to invite others, and I'm gonna review some of the cool Zoom features. So I've used Zoom many times before all of this since it was the video conferencing app favored by my grad school program, but it's only in coronavirus quarantine that I've felt compelled to purchase a pro account and really learn how to use it. So I've used Zoom to schedule regular meetings with colleagues and fellow students, but uh, now I've also scheduled Zoom happy hours, dinner parties, game nights, and even my grandma's memorial service. So first of all, Zoom is a video conferencing or a video meeting service. So this means you schedule a meeting and you invite people to join your meeting. So this is different from a video calling service like FaceTime and you can't call someone and have them answer the phone in order to join your meeting. They have to actually log on and join the meeting themselves. So first let's talk about attending a Zoom meeting. The nice thing about Zoom is that you don't have to have an account to join a meeting. The meeting organizer or host will send you an invitation to the meeting. That invitation usually includes a URL or website link, a meeting ID, a password, and a bunch of phone numbers that you can dial if you don't wanna use the audio from your computer. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Really, these are the important bits of information, and if all goes well, you really only need the URL. You can jo join a Zoom meeting from your computer or from your mobile device. In each case, although you don't need a Zoom account, you will need to install the app or the software in order to join. So let's walk through each process first on a computer. So you have received a Zoom meeting invite in an email. If you're on a computer, you click on the meeting URL right here. If you haven't installed the Zoom software yet, it will automatically download that software to your computer at this point. You may have to give it access to make changes to your computer, etc. If nothing happens, and give it a little time before you do this, you can click this link to download and run Zoom to jumpstart that process, but it should all happen automatically. So once you've installed the software, you will need to allow Zoom to open the software by clicking on Open Zoom Meetings. If it prompts, confirm that you do want to use your computer's audio and you are on. Seeing just your own face means that you are the only person in the meeting room right now and you're waiting for others to join you. Okay, so now let's talk about joining a Zoom meeting from an iOS device. So I'm assuming for the purposes of this video that the Android and iOS apps are very similar. To join a meeting, you're gonna to need to first download the Zoom app. If you click on a meeting URL before you have downloaded that app, you will get an error that says something like, your browser cannot open the page because the address is invalid. So, go to your app store, look up Zoom Cloud Meetings, and download it. It's free. Now, when you click the meeting URL, it will automatically launch the app. If you don't have an account, it will prompt you for your name. So this is going to identify you throughout the whole meeting, so watch for typing errors here. If prompted, allow Zoom to use your camera and microphone and join with video. It usually asks how you want to hear others. Choose call using internet audio for this, unless you've had problems with your device audio in the past. And you're in. This should work for any mobile device or tablet. Next, let me show you how to schedule a meeting. Okay, so the free version of Zoom allows you to host meetings with one other person for up to 24 hours. But if you want to have more than two people, your meeting will end after 40 minutes, unless you sign up for a pro account for about $15 a month, which I went ahead and sprung for. I figured it's probably the same as about two beers during happy hour, and really the only way that I'm socializing these days. Either way, you'll need to create an account in order to schedule a meeting. So I have Zoom installed on my computer, my iPhone, and my iPad. I would suggest scheduling meetings and inviting attendees through your phone or tablet because it is way simpler and faster than on a computer. So let's schedule a meeting from my iPad. Here's the home screen. If you wanna start a meeting right now, you click on new meeting. If you want to schedule a meeting for a future time, even if it's five minutes from now, you click on schedule. So I'm gonna hit schedule and I'm gonna name my meeting. Then fill in when you want it to start, how long the meeting is gonna last, make sure your time zone is correct, and choose whether you want it to be a recurring meeting. If you fill in your calendar here, 
In this case, it only gives me the option of the iOS calendar. Zoom will auto create an appointment for you with all of these details, which I think is super helpful. Okay, so now it wants you to choose whether you want to use your personal meeting ID or whether you want to generate a new ID specific to this meeting. So some folks find it easier to use their own meeting ID. This is the equivalent of having a meeting room booked for eternity with people coming in and out um, just during their meeting times with you. The problem is that anyone who knows your meeting ID could theoretically drop in at any moment to any meeting that you have scheduled. It's convenient since you don't have to keep giving out your meeting ID to people you meet with regularly, but I prefer to generate new and specific IDs for each meeting. It's just a preference. I also choose to require a meeting password. So the meeting ID and password are already baked into the URL that you send to your attendees. So if everything is working right, there is no need for participants to type either of these pieces of information in. The URL already has that info embedded and it should let them directly into the meeting. If they're having issues with the URL, on the home page of the app, they can click on join and they can type in the meeting ID and the password in order to gain entry. Since the URLs work really well and it doesn't cause any more work for my attendees generally, I like the additional security that the password gives. It is far easier to Zoom bomb a meeting that doesn't have a password. Zoom bomb is a much less lighthearted light activity than the term would lead you to believe. There have been Zoom bombers who have hijacked Zoom meetings and shown nasty pictures or yelled racial slurs. I'd rather just not have that happen. Continuing through, I would li I like to turn the video on for the host and the participants, and I choose to have both telephone and device audio options available. So what that means is that if someone is having issues hearing or being heard with their computer or their device audio, they can dial a number and participate with everyone using their phone for audio. So I've only had to do this a couple of times, but it's a nice option to have. I don't usually enable the, uh, the waiting room, and I do allow people to join before the host. If you enable a waiting room, you'll need to manually admit each person as they log on as host. So I like to just have everyone automatically join for most meetings. You can choose whether um, anyone with the link can join or whether just those or whether you want um, those who have signed up with a Zoom account to join your meeting. You can automatically record the video meeting and you can assign additional hosts, although truth be told, I've never really gotten this thing to, that to work for me. Okay, once you've done all that, and believe me, it takes way less time the second time you do it, uh, hit done. So because I filled in a calendar, this calendar entry automatically comes up. I usually just change the title slightly since it's appearing on my family calendar, and I hit add. So these options are all the same on the computer, but I find it a lot easier to do this from the device app. Okay, so now that you have your meeting scheduled, you want to invite attendees. Again, this is way faster from your device, so I'll show you how to do this on my iPad. Here we are on the home screen. Choose meetings from the options here. Go to the meeting that you just scheduled and tap it to open it up. Now hit add invitees and you'll be able to choose between sending an email, sending a text, or copying that information. Email is usually best since most folks have access to their email from all of their devices, including their computers, which will give them maximum flexibility on where they want to launch Zoom to attend the meeting. If you send a text, it's harder for most to access that from their computers. So the email comes up with everything already filled in. All you need to do is add email addresses. You can do this from your computer, it's just not quite as automatic. It takes a lot of clicks to do this from the Zoom website, but even from the Zoom software, the email invite doesn't automatically come up filled in. You'll have to copy the, the invitation information, go to your email, paste it in, put a subject, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so now you've, you've scheduled a meeting and you have invited all of your attendees. Let's go through some of the fun Zoom features. So these I'm showing you on my computer because that's where I prefer to attend Zoom meetings. The features are better and I like not having to prop the camera up in order to see the screen. Move the cursor a little bit so that you can see all your options. I'll run through these fairly quickly. First off, there are two different views for Zoom, speaker view and gallery view. Speaker view shows whoever is speaking in a large square and everyone else in teeny tiny squares. Gallery view shows everyone in the same size squares, Brady Bunch style, and highlights the person speaking with a yellow green outline. So to change this up here, click on this to toggle between views. If you attend meetings from a computer, depending on your CPU, you can see up to 49 people in gallery view. On the iPad, you can see up to nine and the view options are over here on the left. 
iPhone users can only see four at one time. Getting to gallery view on a phone requires you to swipe to the left and back to the right to return to speaker view. Moving on down here, you can toggle your own microphone off and on to mute yourself. Same with your video camera. Just to the right of the video camera is a little arrow that gets you to video settings. So here's where you can choose your virtual background. Select choose virtual background. Uh, make sure you have an image already saved to your computer or your device and add it using this plus button here. And voila, you are in front of a green screen with a fun background behind you. So this works better in some light and with some backgrounds than others, so your mileage may vary. I'm not going through all these settings with you, but I will point out one other setting that I use. Under video, I check uh, on touch up my appearance. This has the effect of photoshopping you a bit, tiny bit, so that it smooths out some of the wrinkles and the lines. It's helpful for those of us over the age of 40. The security button allows you to change some of those things that we talked about before. You can lock down the meeting, preventing anyone else from gaining entrance, enable the waiting room so that you, you can check people in before they enter, and decide whether you want your attendees to share their screen, chat, or rename themselves. Pushing the participants button brings up the participants panel. It will say manage participants if you are the host. Normally, if you had a bigger meeting going on, you would see all of your members listed. As the host, you can determine whether you want to mute individual people, like if someone had some loud background noise going, or turn off their camera. I will leave that situation to your imagination. You can mute everyone or you can unmute them. You can invite additional people from this panel, and there are some additional options if you click the More button. If you are a meeting participant and not the host, you can raise your hand here, which only the host can see. This is great for big lectures or webcasts where you want to call on people rather than having them just shout out answers or questions. You can also switch hosting from this panel. So just hover over a participant, click more, and you can make them the host of the meeting. So I use this sometimes when I created the meeting, but I need to leave it earlier than everyone else wants to. Screen share lets you sc share your screen with other people in the group. You can share your whole computer screen, meaning whatever you bring up, other people in your meeting can also see, or you can limit it to just a screen of your choosing, like a PowerPoint presentation. You can also share a whiteboard where you can draw and type, or an iPhone or iPad if you have the plugin for this. If you look down here, you can check this box to share the sound from your computer. Because Zoom is optimized for voice, sometimes music sounds terrible, so sharing the audio directly from your computer might work better. You can use these last buttons to record the meeting um, and add reactions. If I click the clapping hands or thumbs up, uh, that little emoji will appear in my screen. Apparently, there's no way to give like a thumbs down or a negative reaction. So that's pretty much it. We covered attending a Zoom meeting, scheduling one, inviting people to attend, and some Zoom features. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.